The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. How are you all feeling right now? Anything you want to say? As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers. He believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight anymore. Sean Diddy Combs and his infamous freak off parties are back in what's trending in true crime as a New York Post exclusive shows that a former party planner detailed requirements for women to attend the functions. Get this, this party organizer who remains anonymous worked for the music mogul back in 2004 and 2005 and she said that she kept a skill with her to make sure that female guests would maintain a certain weight. That's right. The former party planner told the New York Post, quote, we would do a weigh-in if necessary. The number was 140 pounds. But if a girl was really tall, there was a little bit of discretion involved. The organizer went on to say that the women needed to have, quote, no flab, no cellulite, not overly pierced or tattooed, no short hair, and the girls had to be young and hot. And then some dancers were reportedly paid extra to stay later. Now, here's what's really key. The ages of the women, according to this party planner, were never asked, deliberately never asked. But what do you think about this? Are these claims about Diddy's freak off parties potentially being conflated with the charges that he's facing? Let's bring in our power panel to talk about this. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Franz Borghardt is here, along with private investigator and retired Army counterintelligence officer Manuel Gomez and entertainment commentator Holland Reed. Good morning to you all. I want to pull a little bit of a blurb. This is from the New York Post article that says everybody talking this morning. This former party planner also saying no pants. These women weren't allowed to wear pants, no jeans, no flat shoes. Every girl had to wear a party dress, preferably very short, just enough to cover her butt cheeks, but no longer than mid-thigh. Cleavage showing, and every single one of them had to be wearing stilettos. Uh, that one, there was no exception. High stilettos. All right, so we know that Diddy liked to have these parties, and he's got these requirements that everybody's got a lot to say about. Is this potentially being conflated with the, the criminal claims that are being uh, in federal court, uh, you know, currently still under investigation? He's got charges of sex trafficking. And then we know there were all these other civil lawsuits as well pending. Uh, so let's let's start things off uh, with our friend Holland Reid, friend of the show, uh, somebody who uh, is in the entertainment community. Holland, what are your thoughts after reading this article in the Post? So my first thoughts were, this is the casting couch on steroids. We are used to this kind of behavior in the industry. We know that there are industry standards and there's a lot of pressure on young women to look a certain way, um, act a certain way. But this, this takes it to a different level because this was not for an audition or for a, a job or a video girl, Vixen, whatever you want to call it. This was for the, own, the, the gratification of one person and that's Sean Combs. Now, it also strikes me that this party planner is saying all this and being anonymous because what it goes back to what we've been saying this entire time this was a large coordinated effort amongst everyone around him we need to talk to the chefs we need to talk to the drivers the security guards every single person involved in this man's life should be questioned and held accountable so having something like this 140 pounds short skirts it is the casting couch on steroids and we know exactly what the purpose of those requirements were for yeah, it sure is. I love everything you just said, Holland. Manuel Gomez, tapping into your experience as an investigator for many years, uh, and you did big, big things. Uh, so here, we've got this enormous case, right, with so many witnesses. I don't even know how investigators are going to sort through all this. When you read this article in the Post, I'm curious, do you think there's anything here that investigators need to be looking into in terms of criminality? Well, on, on this case, I... I I look at all the facts on, you know, the 
the lawyers' allegations and everything. There's a lot of people coming out out of nowhere, filing over 120 lawsuits on this guy. Now, do I believe that a, a lot of these cases are true? Yeah. But I believe that it's been put out on steroids that many people are just jumping on the bandwagon and suing this guy. Not that I'm defending P. Diddy, because I do, you know, believe that, you know, he has exploited a lot of people and done a lot of wrong things. But I do believe that this is one big gang bandwagon of let's jump on for a lawsuit and let's get a payday, unfortunately. And and that's why, you know, I also believe that there should have been some type of gag order given regarding the evidence in this case and the stuff that's being released because there's no way there's going to be a, a jury that he's going to be able to get that's not tainted no way in the united states well, i'm so glad you brought up the gag order manuel hold your thoughts on that because we're going to talk about that in a moment uh, franz first want to get your thoughts here uh, legally so let's say you're on diddy's legal team right and, and you pick up the article in the new york post uh what's what's the reaction then that you have legally if if you're representing him so this is never going to end up in a courtroom for the criminal case. It's there's I, I can see reasons why I would try to keep it out as a defense attorney. If I'm the state, there are reasons I would want to keep it out. Um, we have rape shield laws. And when we start talking about like what people are dressed like, uh, generally, that's not admissible. If I can't go there as a defense attorney, then the state can't go there if they're trying to prosecute my client. And then there's a, there's another pickle of an issue with this is, yeah, optically this sounds horrible. I've, I've never lived in LA, I've never lived in New York City, and maybe this is how parties normally are, maybe this is the casting, casting culture, uh, you know, culture, but optically, it cuts both ways because the people wanting to go to these parties, all of a sudden you're providing a benefit to the defense because all of a sudden this idea of consent, of consensual behavior becomes an issue. You were, wait, you were willing to get on a scale to go to the party and you didn't consent to these things. So so if I'm a defense attorney, I, honestly, I like some of this. I don't know that it's ever gonna come in, but I like some of the avenues it, it opens up. And look, we're all talking about this feeling like a bridge too far. So that is a benefit to the defense. And if I'm the prosecution, I'm like, you know what? This sounds sensational, but I don't need to go there. I have enough evidence. I don't need to talk about weigh-ins and, 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 and women body types. I don't need to go there and I'm not gonna go in there so I can disrupt the, the quality of my case. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, a brilliant move. Uh, Franz, thank you for all of that. Holland, I wanna give you the last word on this point. I feel like you may have more to say. So kind of take us home with respect to whether people might be conflating the parties with the freak offs. So I, that's, that's uh, to Franz's point, I completely agree with everything you said and I hate that that's the truth because there is a very fine line of being willing and wanting to be a part of this culture, rubbing elbows with all these celebrities. The fine line is once they felt pressured that this is the only way that they can get in, what happened after that? I think, you know, as a photographer being in front of the camera and behind the camera, I've seen the pressure go both ways. I had a young lady yesterday who text messaged me and wants me to do headshots because she wants to be an actress, she wants to be a model. She asked me, should I lose weight? Should I not lose weight? That's a fine line of guiding her in the right direction with industry standards or what would help her versus, hey, well, let me see your body type or let me get you in a room by yourself, which is what Diddy did. He has new lawsuits out um, about, you know, the making of the band um, audition. So that's where going back to that casting couch on steroids, was this a part of the grooming process? And that's what's so concerning. Exactly. Uh, Holland, that's a perfect transition uh, to the next place where we want to go here in this discussion. The two new civil suits from male accusers who claimed that they were sexually abused during Diddy auditions. One of them alleges he was only 10 years old at the time. The John Doe says in his suit that he was given a soda from Combs and it was allegedly laced with drugs. According to the suit, this accuser says he suddenly lost consciousness after drinking that soda and later woke up with his pants undone and pain in his anus. Now, Combs denies these claims. Last week, his defense team filed some new motions asking the court to issue a gag order that would prevent accusers from further assassinations of his character ahead of trial. So let's talk about it. Should there be a gag order in place for Combs accusers? Let's bring back in our power panel. Manuel Gomez, I wanna start with you. I know you got a lot of thoughts on this point. Well, you know, as I said, 
they should be a gag order because the problem is it goes back to jury selection. How can he get a jury that's going to be unbiased when all this information keeps getting leaked out to the media? You know, and then, and and one other thing I also want to touch base on when it comes to this uh, the, the child being um, assaulted. You know, currently all state and federal laws do not criminalize all acts of sexploitation of adults and we need to amend the laws so that it can uh, include you know casting couch situations to better protect the public and the people of this industry i love that idea manuel i have got a little excerpt we pulled from the second accuser suit uh, and this was what holland referenced that making the band audition uh, this uh, person is alleging he was assaulted when he was 17. Um, quote as combs described these scenarios he began to sexually assault plaintiff by touching plaintiff both over over and under his clothing, including groping and fondling his penis and instructing plaintiff to undress according to the suit. Again, just an excerpt. Uh, but in the context of what we're talking about, casting, right? Casting for making the band. Uh, Franz, want to go to you next year on this point. Uh, the gag orders, uh, what do you think should be the just thing to do here? Is the gag order fair and just? So you have to balance the right of a survivor a plaintiff, a survivor who went through this traumatic exper experience and their, their right to have a voice, right? You have to balance that with the reality that the more they open their mouths, the more you are diminishing Diddy's ability to get a fair trial. And, and look, whether or not you care about Diddy or not, whether or not you care about whether or not he gets a fair trial or not, if you think he did it, you want him to get a fair trial because if he doesn't get a fair trial, any conviction won't stick. And you should want him to get a fair trial. Um, so I think a gag order would be appropriate. Now, as a defense attorney, I have to file a motion for a gag order. But behind the scenes, I'm kind of hoping it gets denied because then I can look at the judge and say, judge, my client can't get a fair trial. I filed a motion for a gag order. You denied it. And now look what we have. The other side of it is the more the survivors talk, the more any witness talks about anything, the more there is an opportunity to exploit inconsistency. Inconsistency in, in statements is a credibility slayer. If I can prove that you were inconsistent, even if it was a reasonable inconsistency, all of a sudden it questions your credibility and all of a sudden I have something to work with as a defense attorney. I love all of that. A brilliant Franz. Holland Reed, would you take us home on this? Uh, your thoughts. Uh, this is a, a tough position. The judge is in here. I do not envy that judge uh, to have to strike this balancing act. What are your thoughts on the gag order? Um, I think my my thoughts are 10 year old boy. If the parents cooperate the story, that's a big nail in the coffin for Diddy. Um, as Manuel said earlier, the Titanic is a reference. The, the ship is sinking. I think that I'm sorry, trying to be quick here. I think that all of this, is, as it continues to come to a head, more witnesses will come forward and the stories will keep sticking. And he's going down, and I think that's just the end of it. I think you're exactly Sorry. right. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave it here for now. I know we're going to continue the conversation. Love having you all on the program this morning. Holland Reed, Franz Borgard, Manuel Gomez, thank you all so much.